demonstrates that the theory of evolution is useful for making sense out of biological observations. In my last video, I addressed a prevalent misconception regarding evolution and the fossil record, namely the claim that there are no intermediate fossil forms. By critically examining this claim, I showed that those who make it are usually harboring fundamental misconceptions about how evolution works. The purpose of this video is to explore several examples of fossil intermediate forms that were predicted using evolutionary theory prior to their eventual discovery. This will illustrate the predictive power of evolutionary theory and once again show that evolution is real science. Before we look at some examples of actual intermediate forms, it is important to clear up one other misconception. It is sometimes argued that a fossil specimen cannot be considered an intermediate form unless it has been shown to be the direct ancestor of an existing species or group of species. This argument sets up an impossible task because, in the words of paleontologist Colin Patterson, fossils may tell us many things, but one thing they can never disclose is whether they were the ancestors of anything else. Those who make this argument often do so precisely because they know that it is impossible to definitively determine ancestry based solely on fossil evidence. Any proposed transitional fossil could therefore be disputed on these grounds. The reply to this flawed argument is to point out that evolution proceeds in a branching pattern of descent and not along a linear line from one species to the next. Therefore, at any given point in time, there will likely be many possible lineages that exhibit intermediate characteristics, even though only one of these lineages represents the direct ancestor of an existing group. Even though we cannot predict the exact combination of characteristics that should be found in an ancestral species, we can specify which sets of features must have changed and make predictions about what such changes would look like if evolution by common descent has occurred. Then we can look for fossils with those characteristics to test our predictions. Evolution is real science because it has been used to make innumerable such predictions about which intermediate forms should be found and when they should occur. These predictions are repeatedly confirmed by incredible new fossil discoveries. For the remainder of this video, we will explore some examples of fossil intermediate forms that were predicted to exist before they were actually discovered. The first example involves the evolution of frogs and salamanders from ancient amphibians. Modern molecular studies have suggested that, among the three existing groups of amphibians, frogs and salamanders are more closely related to each other than to the worm-like Sicilians. Based on this evidence, paleontologists used evolutionary theory to predict the existence of a creature with a combination of frog-like and salamander-like features that should have existed prior to the earliest known frogs and salamanders in the fossil record. This prediction was confirmed by the discovery in Texas of the fossil remains of Gerobatricus, a primitive amphibian that existed approximately 290 million years ago well before the earliest fossil evidence of recognizable frogs and salamanders. Gerobatricus is an intermediate form that fits neatly into the gap between frogs and salamanders. This intermediate form exhibits a unique mosaic of features in its teeth, ears, limbs, and backbone that all suggest it was close to the origin of modern frogs and salamanders. A second example involves the evolution of turtles. Turtles are unique among existing reptile groups in that they have a beak instead of teeth and their bodies are protected by a bony shell. In modern day turtle embryos, the lower shell forms first and then the ribs and backbone expand and widen to form the upper shell. Based on this evidence, some herpetologists have hypothesized that the lower shell probably formed first in turtle evolution, followed by an outgrowth and broadening of the ribs and the backbone to form the upper shell. Paleontologists predicted that the oldest turtles should show evidence of these changes. This prediction was confirmed by the discovery of the fossil remains of the oldest known turtle in deposits from China. Three specimens of this species, named Odontocales, were fossilized in rocks dating back to 220 million years ago. Just as predicted, this intermediate form had a full set of teeth and no beak. Also as predicted, it had a complete lower shell and an incomplete upper shell made from broadened ribs and backbone. This evidence confirms the hypothesis that the lower shell evolved first, followed later by the upper shell. Our third example involves the evolution of snakes. Evidence from the morphology and development of existing snakes suggests that they evolved from a limbed ancestor. Molecular evidence also supports this hypothesis, showing that, among living animal groups, snakes are most closely related to lizards. In fact, the most primitive existing snakes, pythons and boa constrictors, have tiny nub-like legs beneath their skin and minuscule half-inch claws that protrude out from their bodies. 
Based on this evidence, paleontologists used evolutionary theory to predict the existence of primitive snake fossils with evidence of limbs. This prediction was confirmed by the discovery of the fossil remains of the oldest known snakes, dating back to around 90 million years ago, each of which shows evidence of hind limbs. Among these fossils is the most primitive known snake, Nahash, found in 90 million year rocks from Argentina. This specimen not only shows evidence of robust functional hind limbs, but also a pelvis supported by a sacrum. All of these features were predicted to be found in the limbed ancestors of snakes. The next example involves the evolution of bats. Bats are unique among mammals because of their ability to fly and their ability to echolocate. For quite some time, the oldest known bats in the fossil record showed evidence of both of these abilities. Using evolutionary theory, paleontologists predicted that they should find primitive bats with one of these abilities, but not the other. This prediction was confirmed by the discovery of Onychonycteris, the most primitive known species of bat, discovered in Wyoming and embedded in rocks that are around 50 million years old. Onychonycteris had an underdeveloped inner ear that suggests it was unable to echolocate. It also had short, broad wings with claws on all five fingers, longer hind legs, and a broader tail than modern bats. This evidence indicates that flying evolved first and echolocation evolved later. A fifth example involves the evolution of flatfish, the group of fish that includes flounder, plaice, and halibut. All adult flatfishes have asymmetrical skulls, with both eyes located on one side of the head. This unique arrangement arises early in the life of every flatfish, when the symmetrical larva undergoes a metamorphosis to produce an asymmetrical juvenile flatfish. During this process, one eye actually migrates up and over the top of the head before coming to rest in the adult position on the opposite side. The development of this unique arrangement is such a significant transformation that paleontologists predicted evidence of this transition should be found in fossils of primitive flatfish. This prediction was confirmed by the identification of fossils that are the most primitive known flatfishes. These specimens, known as Amphistium and Heteronectes, were found in European limestone deposits dating back 50 million years. They show evidence of slightly asymmetrical skulls with eyes still on opposite sides of the head. Each of these specimens represents a predicted intermediate form between the peculiar eye arrangement in living flatfishes and the arrangement found in other fishes. Our final example involves the evolution of sirenians, the group of mammals that includes manatees and dugongs. Sirenians are fully aquatic mammals with flippers and no hind limbs. Morphological and molecular evidence indicates that, among existing species, the sirenians are most closely related to elephants. Based on this evidence, paleontologists predicted the existence of primitive sirenians with hind limbs. This prediction was confirmed by the unearthing of Pezosiren, the oldest and most primitive sirenian in the fossil record, which was found in 50 million year old deposits from Jamaica. Pezosiren was fully capable of walking on land, with four well-developed legs and a long tail. However, the details of its nasal opening and its thick ribs suggest that Pezosiren also spent much of its time in water. This evidence makes Pezosiren a clear intermediate form between land animals and fully aquatic sirenians. So, there you have it. Fossil discoveries, combined with evidence from morphological, genetic, and embryological studies of existing organisms, lead us to a powerful explanation of a large set of biological observations. But these six examples only scratch the surface. Other transitional fossil series include fossils documenting the evolution of amphibians from lobe fin fish, the evolution of mammals from reptiles, the evolution of birds from theropod dinosaurs, the evolution of whales from hoofed mammals, the evolution of horses from five-toed ancestors, and, of course, the evolution of humans from bipedal apes. The list of transitional fossil series truly goes on and on. And these observations only make sense using the real science of evolution. I'm Jeremy Moan. Thanks for watching my video. This video lesson has been brought to you by Stand Up For Real Science, a website devoted to defending the teaching of mainstream science in public school science classrooms. Visit us at www.anevolvingcreation.net slash standup.